historical perspective the technique was introduced in 1930s by martin and ellis in united states fine needle for aspiration first introduced in europe in 1950s by lopez cardoso in netherlands and soderstrom in sweden publication by jessisek in stockholm that brought aspiration cytology to international alterations fnac as a tool in clinical investigations initially it is used as a mean to confirm clinical suspicion of local recurrence or metastasis of a known cancer without subjecting the patient to further surgical interventions apart from its role in the diagnosis of neoplasia it's also valuable in valuable in diagnosis of inflammatory infectious and degenerative conditions the success of fnac depends on these requirements first samples must be representative of the lesion investigated sample must be adequate in terms of cells and other tissue components sample must be correctly smeared and processed so these are the equipment required for fnac needle routinely 22 to 23 courses needle is used then uh, syringe and syringe holder coplin jar and slides fixative 90 to 95% ethanol carno is fixative 10 percentage buffered formalin glutaraldehyde this can be used then stains microscopes others like cotton swab spirit all this then preparation before doing fnac a cytology requisition form is uh, needed which contains patient's name address date of specimen collection specimen source requesting doctor's name appropriate clinical and radiological information the procedure should be clearly explained to the patient to assure his or her consent and cooperation the procedure is usually carried out with patient in supine or sitting uh, position on examination couch local examination and palpation of the uh, lump is essential so these are the two techniques one is with aspiration and the other is without aspiration uh, with aspiration we use needle and a syringe and in without aspiration we use only the needle so fnac with aspiration uh, let's see this step first the site of fnac should be cleaned with spirit swab and needle is introduced in the swelling and is gently moving to and fro simultaneously negative suction is also created by withdrawing the piston the negative pressure hold the tissue against the cutting edge of the needle so before withdrawing the needle it is essential to release the negative pressure and once we drawn detach the syringe from the needle air is taken in the syringe and the needle is reattached expel the specimen onto the glass microscope microscopic slide the aspirated material is expelled and the smear is made by gently pressing the upper slide on the lower slide after that firm pressure is applied to the mask and the surrounding area uh, immediately ideal aspirate has a creamy consistency due to high cell content in a small amount of fluid so this is the diagrammatic representation the, the target tissue and the needle is uh, placed inside the target tissue and it is aspirated and the negative uh, pressure is released and the needle is taken and it is uh, re uh, and the needle is taken out and the needle is detached and the air is drawn into the syringe and the sample is blown onto the microscopic slide so next technique is sampling without aspiration also fine needle non aspiration cytology it is introduced by uh, sajela in 1987 based on the observation that capillary pressure in a fine needle is sufficient to keep the detached cell inside the lumen of the needle so let's see the step first uh, clean the side with spirit and cotton and fix the target mask between two fingers of the non dominant hand hold the needle by the half between thumb and index finger advance the needle into the target mask and the needle is moved back and forth varying angle then the needle is withdrawn and it is attached to a syringe and sample is blown onto microscopic slide so this technique without aspiration the admixture with blood is generally less than that with aspiration so it is well suited for the biopsy of thyroid and other vascular tissues and it is routinely done in superficial biopsies except in uh, cystic lesions and in fibrotic post cellular tumors in breast and soft tissues so let's see the causes of unsatisfactory yield with fnac first the needle miss the target uh, tangentially the needle uh, may enter in the central cystic or necrotic hemorrhagic area which are devoid of the diagnostic cells then the small malignant tumor may be masked by a large benign tumor and lack of cells in dense fibrosclerotic tissues so after sampling then the processing of the 
sample. Sample is expelled on a clean, dry slide using air in the syringe. Then smearing. So there are two types of smearing: direct smearing and indirect smearing. In direct smearing, again two types of samples: direct, uh, dry sample and a wet sample. Dry sample is creamy consistency due to high cellularity with little or no blood or fluid. So a dry sample is best smeared with the flat of a second slide, exerting a light pressure as it is moved along the specimen slide. And the smears of dry aspirate dry quickly, resulting in a milky, finely granular film on the slide. The next is the wet aspirate, and which mainly consists of blood or fluid containing small number of cells. So uh, this is done in two-step smearing technique. The smearing slide is held against the specimen slide at a blunt angle near one end of the slide, allowing the fluid to accumulate in the angle. The smearing slide is then rapidly moved along the specimen slide, halfway or all way, depending on the amount of the fluid. Most of the fluid is left behind, while the cells tend to follow the smearing slide, and the concentrated cells are then smeared with the flat of the slide. As for a dry aspirate, either on the same specimen slide or swipe to another slide. So this is the uh, two-step smearing technique done for the uh, wet aspirate. So uh, this is a first one is a dry sample where cell clusters are seen as blue dot evenly spread, and the second one is a wet sample and uh, mainly blood at the top clusters concentrated and evenly spread in the thin mid portion. So next type is the indirect smearing. So thin fluid samples are best processed by centrifugation in a uh, cytocentrifuge. A cytocentrifuge is a device that spins the cell in a fluid suspension directly onto a glass slide. Other method is millipore nucleopore filtration, then thin prep technique, which produces the truest monolayer of cells, thus avoiding the overlapping of the cells. Then next comes fixation and staining. So fixation is done to preserve the cytomorphology of the cells, and most commonly used fixative is 95 percent is ethanol, and fixation time 10 to 15 minutes at room temperature. There are uh, two different methods of fixation and staining. So first one is air drying, which is uh, followed by staining with a Romanowski stain such as Magrenwald Gemsa stain, Jenner Gemsa diffuse. Uh, Lishman right stain. Then the second method is the alcohol fixation or wet fixation, which is followed by staining with papinicolu stain and or with hematoxylin and eosin. So uh, this is papinicolu stain, which contains three solutions: nuclear stain, which is Harris hematoxylin, then cytoplasmic counter stain, which is orange G6 and uh, eosin alcohol, and this uh, PAP stain is best for studying the nuclear features. So results nuclei appears uh, blue or black, then cytoplasm for non-keratinizing squamous, which appears blue or green, and for keratinizing cells, it is pink or orange. So next stain is the hematoxylin and eosin, and hematoxylin stain cell nuclei blue, and eosin stain the extracellular matrix and cytoplasm is pink. Next is uh, Romanowski stain, so which contains methylene blue or azure B and eosin, which is dissolved in acetone-free methanol. Examples are Jenner stain, Magrenoir Gemsa, Leishman and Wright stain. Magrenoir Gemsa stain, which is useful for studying cell morphology in air-dried smears. So, which contains methylene blue, which is a basic dye, azure also a basic dye, then eosin and acetic dye. And uh, this stains nuclear blue, cytoplasm pink or rose to light blue and bacteria also blue. Uh, this is the comparison between the three types of stain, stain that is Gemsa, Hematoxylin, Eosin, and Papinicolu. Uh, and preparation of material for Gemsa, it is air drying and Hematoxylin and Papinicolu stain, uh, it is alcohol fixation. Cytoplasmic features, which is uh, best in the uh, Gemsa and it offers a, a little cytoplasmic differentiation in Hematoxylin and for PAP stain, it brings us cytoplasmic keratinization. Nuclear features, it is excellent identified in the uh, PAP stain and in HNE stain, it uh, tend to overstain nuclei unless carefully performed. And nucleolate, it is readily visible as pale intranuclear structures in GEMSA and uh, adequate, sometimes difficult to see in hyperchromatic nuclei in HNE and adequate, sometimes difficult to see in uh, PAP stain also. Mucus and colloid, which is well visualized in GEMSA, requires special stain in both HNE and PAP stain. So, uh, special stains, PAS or Elgin blue is used for mucins. 
Christian blue is used for iron. Marcin's fontana for melanin. Congo red is used for amyloid. Gram passer gomori silver stain for microorganism. Seal nuisance for acid fast passing. So, uh, this is rapid onset evaluation or dose. So this is a technique in uh, di it is cytopathologic diagnostic adequacy assessment of individual biopsy passes performed during a biopsy procedure in order to optimize the procedure itself and inform subsequent patient management. So the ROS reduces the number of biopsy passes, number of procedures to obtain a final diagnosis. This is a uh, ROS part which contains a microscope and the uh, stains. Let's see about the advantages of FNAC. So it is minimally invasive, rapid diagnosis, inexpensive, and can be done in outpatient procedure, sampling for multiple sites in the same sitting, and high diagnostic accuracy. In cases of deep lesions, ultrasound or CT guidance may be used to ensure the needle enters the lesion. Painless and usually no anesthesia is required. Limitation, result and accuracy highly depend on the quality of the smear and the samples. There is loss of tissue architecture. Capsular invasion and lymphovascular invasion cannot be detected. Considerable training and experience is needed for accurate interpretation. Let's see about some complications. So hematoma is the most common and significant complication, but most of the hematomas are small and they are resolved without any treatment. Infection following fine needle biopsy of the neck is a rare complication and infection and subsequent necrosis of the biopsy neck mass is also rare. Recurrent laryngeal nerve paralysis following the fine needle aspiration of uh, thyroid gland is known. Uh, these are my references.